Hey, Dan here with Home Meets Road, and this is going to be a little bit of a different video than you might be used to from us. But it's been a video that's been a long time coming, and it's all about towing with our half ton truck. is filthy right now even though it went through the car wash two days ago for this video but you know black truck life it, it is filthy um, don't go with a black truck why did we go with a black truck I will get into that in a moment but it is uh, 25 degrees out here and a bit windy so I'm gonna go sit in the truck and get this video going Hey, this is Dan, Jessa, and Braxton. Oh, and Pepper. And in 2019, we did a complete rebuild of our vintage travel trailer and hit the open road. Join us on one of our adventures as home meets road. All right, since it is nice and cozy in here and the sound is going to be good, without the whole wind situation going on out there. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot most of the video of me sitting in here, but you don't wanna stare at my ugly mug the entire time. So I have plenty of B-roll of the truck when it actually is clean and from us being on the road in the last two years. Now, if you are new around here, let me give you a quick background story to us so you have a better understanding of how we use this truck. So in 2019, we decided to hit the road, but we needed to build our RV first. Yes, we bought a 1972 Bulls Aero Travel Trailer, ripped it down to the frame and built it back up. The nice thing is that during this entire time, we did have this truck. We bought the truck about a week before we found the trailer. And this truck has, well, if you've owned the truck, you know, they come in really handy when you need to run to the Home Depot or Lowe's or any hardware store on a daily basis. So this truck has about 10 months of regular daily driving. And after that, we hit the road. Now we've been on the road for over two years now. And this truck has about almost 56,000 miles on it and our trailer has 25,000 miles on it. So you could say that 50% of this truck's life has been spent towing our trailer. And we've been around the United States twice now in that time. So we've been through everything from the desert, well, we started in Arizona, to the insane amount of Texas there is, all the way to Florida, all the way up to Maine and across. So we have seen every road, including Teton Pass, which I do not recommend doing unless you have a big truck with a diesel. Don't do it, just don't do it. All right, now that we covered us, let's talk about the truck. It is a 2018 Ram 1500 crew cab with the 5.7 Hemi and the uh, 5.6 bed. Why black? Well, when we went to the dealership, this was the only truck available. Yeah, they had like I don't know, a hundred some odd, 15 hundreds sitting on the lot. But the problem is that once everything changes the numbers, it, not only does the engine transmission and rear end configuration determine of how much you can tow, but depending on the trim level to what kind of seats this thing has, what kind of center console this thing has, every single thing affects its carrying capacity. And looking at all the 1500s on the lot, this really was a unicorn. It had the most power and the most carry and towing capacity. So let's get into those numbers. 
Oh, and I should mention, yes, it is a two-wheel drive. That is one of my biggest regrets. It is not a four-wheel drive. However, if we would have gone with a four-wheel drive, it would have lowered the carrying capacity by almost 300 pounds. That's a lot when you are a full-timer. So let's talk about the numbers. This is the Hemi, and I would not recommend anything less than the Hemi, because you need some power. And this thing's got some serious power. It has 400 horsepower and 400 pounds of torque. And towing our trailer, which the trailer is around 9,500 pounds altogether, we can pass pretty much anything going uphill. It, yeah. The only issue is that we would pass everything going downhill too, because we don't seem to have the stopping power either. When it comes to carry capacity, this truck can do just under 1,600 pounds. And it is a big horn. It is a regular interior, nothing too fancy, but at least we have a nice heads up display and it's comfortable. Again, if we would have gone with the 4x4 version or changed anything else on the interior, that number would have started going down significantly. When it comes to towing, this truck can handle 10,350 pounds. And with the Hemi, really, this thing is amazing. It's got some serious power, especially as a daily driver, it is great. Um, I always joke around, this thing passes everything but a gas station. That sounds funny, and it's actually not really true. If we are not towing, this thing can get 450 miles to the tank with no problem. But the minute we start towing, obviously, our gas mileage goes downhill quick. And if you have any wind whatsoever, you are looking at about 8 miles to the gallon. Yeah. Alright, you know about our story, you know about the truck. Let's talk about towing with a half-ton truck. Um, would I recommend it? Yeah, I mean, we've been, we've been doing it for over two years with, mm, I would say, about 80% no problems. Uh, it really obviously comes down to your setup. Now, our trailer weighs around 95, 100 pounds, give or take. That is with full tanks, with all our stuff in. Remember, we are full timers, so we travel with a lot of stuff. Now, the trailer itself, on the axles, on the trailer axles, it puts down about 8,500, and then it puts 1,000 onto this truck. So the pin weight is about 1,000 pounds, um, which is a lot, because that only gives us about 600 pounds with three, well, with a dog, four occupants, um, all the extra equipment that this truck has, plus the, the bed of this truck is technically my garage, and we've got a bike rack and all the other stuff. <sighs> yes, we are a slight bit over that number. So let's talk about that. If if you can be within the numbers of the truck, obviously a 1500 will do great, especially since 50% of the time you're using it as your daily driver. You know, this thing will go through any car wash. This thing will go through any drive through No problem. You can park it anywhere. All that is good. And you've got some power with the Hemi. You know, you can have a little bit of fun. You can open it up and go. When it comes to towing, though, you can definitely tell that the truck it's not struggling. I wouldn't call it struggling. You can tell that there's a mutual understanding between the truck and the trailer. And as long as you are focused and you are keeping your hands on the steering wheel and eyes on the road, everything is fine. But you definitely know the trailer's back there. You definitely know when something's not right with the trailer. For example, we are less than a block from the highway here. When we hook up and hit the highway, 
I can guarantee you I will be able to tell once the tires warm up on the trailer. Yeah, I, yes, definitely. No question asked. I know that. And any crosswinds whatsoever, anything over 10 miles an hour, and it is white knuckle driving and you're going to have to slow down. And we have been in a situation where we had to pull over for two, three days and wait for the wind to come down because there's no way this half ton truck would tow our trailer in those kind of winds. Now let's talk about modifications. There is a lot of things that you can do to a half ton truck, not only to make it tow a little bit better, but also to make your full time RV life a little bit better. I'm not going to go in any particular order here. I'm just going to start at the front bumper and work my way back. Just because it's easier for me. Number one, we did not realize this until we were stuck in Corpus Christi on the beach. The truck sank, the trailer sank, and somebody asked, hey, do you need us, do, do you need a tow? Do you need us to pull you out? Sure thing, wait. We don't have any tow hooks. Yeah. Come to find out, and hey, you might know this, I did not. Ram does not put tow hooks on two wheel drive trucks. That makes no sense whatsoever. I feel like two wheel drive trucks are the ones that should have the tow hooks. But no, Ram only puts tow hooks on four wheel drive trucks. So we had to add those. Definitely something I would recommend, especially if you are planning on doing any boondocking whatsoever. The ironic part is that we've put those on over a year ago and we haven't used them once. <laughs> yeah. Next thing, um, under the hood, honestly we haven't done anything under the hood except for upgrade the battery um, and oh, we have an air horn. Yes, air horn. The air horn was kind of like an afterthought, but you definitely need it. There are some idiots on the road and sometimes they need a little bit of a reminder that you are a little bit bigger than what they think and hey, you do not have the stopping power that they might think you have. Now. The air horn was an afterthought because we equipped this truck with airbags. I am seriously jumping from the front bumper to the back. I don't understand. Anyway, yes, we have airbags on this truck and that is probably my top two recommendations to have. Uh, the airbags have made a huge difference. And the nice thing is that we can adjust the airbags on the fly. So yeah. So yes, we do have an air compressor and a tank. I also have an air nozzle in the rear bumper, which comes in handy. Um, because I can do the tires, make sure they are at the right PSI, and I do that before every big tow. And what I mean with that, anything over 100 miles. If you're wondering, this is how a screen looks like after two years on the road. And yeah, it's always dirty, but um, this is the controller for the airbags. So right now I'm increasing pressure. Now I'm gonna let air out of the airbags. And then, so this is the gauge that tells me the, uh, what the airbags are at. And then this is the gauge telling me what my tank is at. And then this is for the air compressor. So that's on and it only comes on when the pressure is below 120 PSI and off. So that's really, that's it. Oh, and if you're wondering, let me go to a big view. This is the factory horn. 
And then you can't see it really, but by my foot right here, I have a old school button that used to be like a, a high beam switch for that you found in like, uh, I don't know, 60s and 70s cars, I believe. But anyway, if I push that, you can hear my air horn. So yeah, the nice thing is that while driving, this foot is on the air horn button at all times. I've got this one on the gas and brake. I've got one hand on the steering wheel. Well, okay, usually two hands, but in crazy situation, I will have one hand here. So this one is then right here where not only I can control my handbrake, but I can also control the airbags when need be. The second thing that has made the biggest difference, tires. The factory tires that they put on these trucks, yes, they are rated for what this truck can handle. They're horrendous. Uh, we had a blowout in California. This was within the first three months of hitting the road. Um, the tire wasn't really holding air and all of a sudden my dashboard was going crazy telling me that we are losing air fast. I had to pull off the side of the highway, change the tire, and then we went to the nearest town, dropped the trailer. No, actually, no. We put the trailer in the parking lot of a discount tire and we had some BFG's KO2's put on this truck. These tires have made a world of difference. However, they are a bit soft. We've ran Kia KO2s for years um, on our FJ Cruiser and on our 4x4 and all that stuff, but they are way too soft to tow something heavy and to live on the road full time. Um, you burn through them extremely fast. Okay, next thing, these uh, wind deflectors right here. Sounds stupid, but man, those things help a lot, especially because you're going to be in and out of different climates and you're going to need, be able to need, need to crack your windows a little bit here and there, either because of the ridiculous heat you are in in Arizona or because you're on the northeast and the humidity is just ridiculous and you need to be able to let your interior breathe out. Sounds, sounds silly, but they make a huge difference. Next things, uh, these, this is just a suction cup holder and we actually use these for not only our phones but also to hold the screen for the backup camera on the trailer. Yeah, these things are amazing. The only thing is the next one I'm going to order is going to be one that has the charger built in so I don't have to plug in a cable all the time. The next thing is the tonneau cover. Now we have a Pace Edwards, I think, Ultra Proof. This thing has been great. It does not keep water out 100%. So I'm just going through a car wash. Let's see how the tonneau cover did. Yeah, you see? It does not keep water out. You're going to have water come in and water will be on the floor. So as long as whatever you're storing in there is in a tote, you're completely fine. Um, but the nice thing is that it does lock and when your tailgate closes and your tailgate is locked, it is locked, it's secure. It will keep the honest people honest. If somebody wants to seriously get in there, they're going to get in there. But for the most part, it will keep people honest and it's a good place to store your stuff. We use it as our garage. Now, the nice thing is this one does have, I call it C channels on both sides, which allow us to put anything on. And we have a bike rack on top of that. They are uh, tool crossbars and then Yakima bike racks. These bike racks are designed to put your bike on without having to take your front tire off. 
And let's face it, I am lazy. The more work I have to do, the less likely I am to take the bikes off. So this was the choice that I went with. It works really well, honestly. Um, I really don't have any complaints with this other than the uh, the tie screw to, to make the, the front wheel clamp tight. You have to do it by hand and it takes forever. I wish I've tried to find a different nut for it that allows me to use an impact gun, but um, it's kind of an odd thread that I cannot find anywhere. Oh, and if you're wondering, I'm running with the standard mirrors. We initially, when we got the truck, I did order an extension that clipped on and came out and had another mirror on here. But the problem is, A, it looked horrendous, B, that didn't really give me anything, and C, it had an issue because this bottom lip was so extended that when I put my mirrors in, it would hit the window. And considering I put my mirrors in every single time I park, I didn't want to do that. So the only thing I have done is add these little ones and they come in great. This, when I'm towing, has the trailer in it and I can see where the tires are going for the trailer. And then this, I've got this turned so far out that I can see pretty much anything. I really don't have any blind spot. Now granted, I do have a camera on the back of the trailer. So what's the takeaway? What is truly my thought about being a full-time RVer with a half-ton truck? If you have one already and you can find an RV that will work within the numbers for that, great. But if you are someone that needs to go out and buy a truck to tow your RV, I definitely recommend going bigger. Go as big as you can. Because driving with a half ton truck, driving with any truck that is not as big as possible is playing Russian roulette. There's been plenty of times where I have had a serious pucker factor driving the 1500 and um, we've gotten lucky every time but being full-time on the road putting so many miles on driving all the time towing all the time sooner or later our luck is going to run out and I'm going to wish I would have a bigger truck and if you couldn't tell by the interior change we change trucks. So goodbye to our 1500 and hello to our new 3500 Dually. And on that note, thanks for watching. Happy travels.